These people are the Yazidis, and they were targeted in a recent genocide by ISIS. Yazidism is a pure religion that started in Iraq millenniums ago. I'm Aklas Oso, my mom is from Sinjar, and my dad is from Khanasur. We marry only within the religion based off of purity. You can only be born into this religion. You can't marry outside and people can't convert to the religion either. It has the same elements of ancient Mesopotamia, and the center of their faith is in this tiny northern Iraqi town called Lalish. Okay, so we just arrived in Lalesh and it's mandatory for everyone to take off their shoes because in the Yazidi religion, it's such a holy site, such a holy place that to show respect, you don't wear shoes. Uh, this is the holiest place uh, for Yazidis and it's like their Mecca and they pilgrim from all around the world uh, to this place. We believe in gods and goddesses. There's Khwadet, Tawsi Malak, Khatla Kharfan, Sharfadin, Shehman. So what language do they speak? We speak Kermanji, Kurdish, and there's Sorani, there's Kermanji, there's two different dialects. While it's a beautiful and historic place inside and out, I'm not here to tell you about that. In 2014, a horrific genocide occurred against the Yazidis when ISIS stormed in and killed men by the thousands and forced women into sexual slavery. Why? Because they aren't Muslims. They were forced to convert to Islam, and if they didn't, they were killed. They said that you should convert their religion, and but to us Yazidian, we cannot uh, be baptized or uh, convert. ISIS's action against the Yazidi population have resulted in roughly 4,000 deaths, 10,000 kidnappings, and caused 50,000 refugees. I met up with some Yazidis today in Lalish who lived through it all. In 2014, what happened? In 2014, there's uh, an, uh, as a military that is uh, not uh, legal. Uh, they called ISIS and came to Shingal and to attack Shingal to Yazidian people. On August 3rd, ISIS came and took away their homes and took over Shingal and they fled. He says that him and his family got out safe, but a lot of people from his village and a lot of his friends were held captive by ISIS. <laughs> He's saying that he as a Shingalian or Yazidian people, the ISIS came and they said that you should be Muslims and uh, we didn't allow them, we didn't accept that. We suffered a lot under their control. They actually kidnapped our mothers, sisters and killed uh, many of uh, people, our, uh, our fathers, mothers, yeah, brothers. Now we are uh, in the camps. Actually, this will be four years that you're in the camps. Can you talk about what you saw on August 3rd? He says, that on August 3rd, he saw two of his cousins being taken by ISIS and they were both slaughtered. Um, they came chasing them with guns from far, but they made it out. Wow. Can I ask him if he has his direct family and friends um, that were affected by, by what happened, by the genocide? He says that I know many friends, many of my friends, that their families kidnapped, killed, and they still now their father, their mothers kidnapped. Are you scared that there's going to be another attack? We are a little bit scared about this, that uh, this uh, uh, terrorists came, showed themselves again. He says uh, if he wasn't scared that ISIS would come back, he would be back in Shingal where his, he built his home. Well, thank you for your time. Sir Java. The reason why the Yazidi genocide feels so real to me is because it happened just five years ago. It's not even written in our history books yet. Hearing these innocent people's horror stories makes me sick to my stomach, and now the religion is 4,000 deaths closer to extinction because one cannot convert to keep it alive. But these people are strong, very strong, and they are optimistic for better times ahead. We have been through many rough times, but we are very hopeful that the future will bring us peace.
I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.